Hi, I'm Camilla. And I'm Kay. And we are the, the Fire, Fire Resellers. Resellers. And we have another What Sold video for you. And we had an awesome week. We can't wait to share with you some of our best sales and share how our investments are going and share just a little bit about building wealth. So make sure that you stay tuned through the whole video so you don't miss any of it. Okay, so here we have a Nike puffer vest and it is really nice. These kind of puffer vests can usually go for a good amount of money when they are you know, down and they're really lightweight. People love these things and they're really expensive new. So this sold for $55. I had it listed originally at 75, but I accepted an offer for 55 because I was sending out offers for 60. So that's what I figured, you know, I'm not gonna lose a sale over $5. And I'm really happy to get this sent out. Obviously, this person is thinking about fall and winter and getting ready for that. So really happy to get this out. It's a, in a good size and we got it from our Throat Up Men's Rescue Box. This was one of the best items we had in there. We had, you know, probably about 20 items in there that were really good items. And then the rest is kind of basic. But those really good items are, you know, kind of what we get those boxes for. You know, just the diamonds and the rough. All right, so we've got a pair of Adidas shoes for you here. And this is the designer, Raph Simons. And Stan Smith here is really cool. He is a tennis player. So these were pretty unique. We sold them for $70 plus shipping on eBay. And we had gotten them through the Third Up Rescue Box a little while back. We were hoping that these were going to do well. And sure enough, the collaboration with Raph Simons and Stan Smith was pretty good. We originally listed it for $100. Um, they do have a little bit of scuffing and whatnot, but at $70, we'll take the offer and we'll get it gone. Lastly, we're going to also try to ship this in a padded flat rate, so we'll see how it goes. All right, I actually lied. We cannot fit this into a padded flat rate, and that's not even what we had in the first place. I misspoke, so I did lie. We're going to just put it in a shoebox, USPS Priority Mail shoebox. Should be pretty easy. We've got bubbles at the bottom. I'm gonna put the shoes in. Put some bubbles at the top we'll close it up and we'll ship it out easy peasy for those of you who do poshmark and you know you're scared of shipping it's really not that hard when you have the buyer pay shipping and you're using usps priority mail stuff anyway so not too difficult so make the jump if you are still you know kind of on the fence of whether you should go from poshmark to ebay you should definitely go and give it a try so it's a season for sweaters jackets and all the cold gear items this is a quarter zip by beretta and this is a shooting jacket. So pretty nice, it's pretty thick, it's pretty well made, and we sold it for $41.65. We don't know a whole lot about these type of items. We just know that this is the weather to sell some of this. It's nice and quilted on the sides here. And also with things that we don't know a whole lot about, we just look it up. So that's the name of the game as always. Even if you don't know a whole lot about the brand, you should look it up. We're going to actually try to stuff this into a padded flat rate envelope. Let's see if we can do it. All right, folks, you think this is gonna fit? <laughs> Take your guess. We'll see here in a second. Look at that. If it fits, it ships. Now we just gotta fold this in and then, then ship it out. Look at that, we freaking did it. <laughs> Crazy. It is a big boy, but we got it in there and it's gonna ship for much cheaper than if we had to put it into a box. Okay, so here we have a Eileen Fisher jumpsuit and we've had this for a while. I realized that I only had it listed on eBay. I had not cross posted it, which is kind of strange, but this is a really nice jumpsuit. I found it one day at the bins with a bunch of other like Eileen Fisher and you know, Chico stuff all in one bin, most likely from one person. And so this sold for a total of $39.65 that the buyer was all in. I had it originally listed at 60, the person offered me 30, and since I've had it for so long, that was why I accepted. I contemplated countering. I don't know, what would you guys do if you had an item for a long time and someone sent a pretty low offer? Do you counter or do you just accept? I am about 50-50 on that, on what I end up doing. But I thought $30 is fine for an Eileen Fisher item, so I ended up accepting and happy to get this, you know, off to its new home. So we sold this bundle of four items on Poshmark, and this first item is a moth. It's like a vest duster, and it is really nice. It's made with wool in there. It's a wool blend, and also this loft 
this pair of loft pants, which have these cute little flowers on them. And so I picked them up just because I thought the flowers are cute. I thought the design was cute. And then this sweater by Bob Mackey that has taken a really long time to sell, but it has this nice, you know, design on there. Very fancy. Bob Mackey is known for art to wear items. So really intricate items. It sold on like HSN. It's kind of a direct order brand. So originally it's pretty expensive. So that's why we often pick it up. But it, recently it hasn't been selling as well as it used to. So we've kind of slowed on that brand. So the last thing is this 360 sweater. And I believe that we got this from a friend gave us, you know, a whole box of stuff. And I think this was one of those items. So I was really happy when the buyer sent me an offer for 61 for all of these. So that's 15 25 for each item, which is a pretty good price for all of these. We've had all of these items for a pretty long time. So I was pretty willing to take just about anything for them. And I love selling bundles. I am right now trying to kind of shrink our store a little bit so sell more items than I'm listing and so this really helps selling bundles helps me do that so I am really excited to get this sent out we don't often get bundles on Poshmark so it always feels pretty special when we do okay so we sold this quilt on Poshmark we sold it for $40 we've had it for a while but just unlisted in our death pile we got this from a friend of ours and this is an eight point star here in the middle it's kind of similar to a carpenter star, but we weren't sure if we could call it that because it's the star in the center is turned just one, you know, um, turn basically. And so we weren't sure, you know, it didn't look exactly right. So we wanted to kind of play it safe. We weren't sure if it was homemade or kind of the age of it. The fabric doesn't look very um, old. So that was why we priced it a little bit lower. And because we have so many quilts, I just wanted to kind of get a fast sale on this. And you can see here, so that's kind of the center of the quilt. And then around the sides, they have this, it's called like a bouquet or a nosegay square. So you can see, you know, it almost looks like it's kind of the, the base here and then the flowers coming out over there. So a really pretty design there and you can see you know all the different pieces of floral all the different patchwork pieces so since this is obviously a quilt we can't show you the whole thing on our little stage here so we'll pop up a picture of you know what we had on our listing so you can see you know the entire design we are just really happy to get this going to the buyer and we hope that the buyer really likes it all right folks take a look at this this box has the quilt in it and it is nearly five pounds. So you can't really do this anywhere else but Poshmark where you use any priority mailbox, this red one. And this one just happens to be the large flat rate box that we had lying around. We don't really have any other ones right now, but it fits pretty well. I folded it to where it's really nicely folded and, and all that, but it's almost five pounds and the buyer gets it for about $8 shipped. So. Really good deal as far as weight goes. This is just one of the best things about Poshmark, especially when it comes to quilts, you can't really beat it because the buyer gets a great deal and you know you get to ship it in such a large box that you're never really worried about something like this. It's still got you know about six ounces on it. So that's just something that I wanted to talk about because I don't think Poshmark gets enough credit for it. And then, you know, with the bundle sales, that is a really great deal for the buyers as well, where they get to pay one small price for all these items, like that bundle that we had previously that you saw. So just one of the things that we like about Poshmark. So that's why we cross this to Poshmark. You know, we get a few good sales here and there, and a lot of people are uh, getting really good deals there too. Okay, so here we have a work dress. It's by the brand M.M. Lafleur, And M.M. Lafleur is a pretty well-known brand for work items for women. They make like capsule, wardrobes and stuff like that and it's really really expensive new we love to find this brand we often pick it up and this sold for $35 on Facebook marketplace so I was really happy with that sale our Facebook was on a 20% sale this week 
So that was why it sold for 35. And it does have a little bit of, I think like armpit staining. Often when I find this brand, the dresses have that. I'm not, I guess, you know, in a work setting you're wearing a lot of deodorant and it gets on these clothes or maybe the brand doesn't make clothes that are very deodorant resistant. I'm not really sure. But that's definitely something to look out for. If you pick up this brand, you wanna check for that. But even with that, sometimes it's still worth picking up, especially if it's a nice item or if it's in a good size. Here we have a Busilla crib cover. And so how this works is it's basically the blanket that has the pattern printed on it and then all of the thread that goes along with it. And this is unopened. And so these kind of patterns, these you know, in cross stitch, embroidery, things like that, even latch hook, these can be worth a good amount. So you want to look them up when you find them at different places. I think one of the best places to find this type of thing is at garage sales, but also especially at church sales. I feel like church sales, they often have, you know, a little bin of different patterns, even sewing patterns and these kind of patterns. And it doesn't take too long to kind of look at them and look them up. And this sold, the person offered $45.99. We had it listed for $49.90, so great offer. Love that. And so we're really excited to get this sent out to them. You should definitely be on the lookout for these, especially in, you know, holiday ones. Those often do pretty well. But this one we were able to just scan and got to see the comps were pretty good. And so really excited to get this sent out. All right. I have something pretty interesting here for you. If you see the logo, it's Supreme. Now, you have to be wary of Supreme knockoffs. Um, this one happens to be something that I had gotten from my friend. And so it's pretty well documented that he will buy stuff like this. And, you know, he is uh, pretty good on his word. So we uh, got this and this sold for $30 for shipping. It just happens to be this oriental style uh, bowl and spoon. This is very Asian. <laughs> so I know this design pretty well. And obviously it has some Asian writing. Pretty sure that's Chinese. And so all in all, Supreme is kind of one of those hit or miss type things where if you buy it, sometimes the hype will carry it pretty well. If you find something like this, obviously pretty easy to look up and then, you know, just do a comp, but essentially nothing too special about this. It does also have this little fingerprint issue here, uh, but still sold for $30 for shipping. I originally listed it for $50 plus shipping, but no bites. So we ended up taking an offer for 30. I'm not too uh, sad about it since we got this for free from my friend. All right, so for this Supreme Bowl, I went ahead and bubble wrapped this spoon and kind of just put this in a plastic bag because it's kind of standard for us. As you see down there, there's padding. This is gonna go on top and it's gonna pretty much surround the sides as well. And you're just gonna fold it in ship it off. So another really cool one. This one is a hat by Cap Boy and it's the Miami Hurricanes, University of Miami. And it's got this really cool, I guess you can call it graffiti style writing. And this type of font is actually pretty cool. You know, it's it's got this edgy type of vibe to it. And I could not find an exact comp on this. And a lot of the other ones were going for about 30. I decided to shoot kind of high and list it for $50 plus shipping. And sure enough, it sold for $55.85. So pretty good. Um, it even has the yellowing around here. The guy was asking if it happens to be an adult hat or a boy hat, probably because, you know, it says cap boy right there. And maybe it was a little confusing, but this is an adult size hat. Um, one size snapback. You know, the demographic for this is pretty limited since it is for a single university, but I do know that the University of Miami does have a lot of hype and good following around it. And just look at how cool this embroidery and this patch is. Like, so freaking cool. So really happy with this sale. I had gotten it for like a dollar or two at a church rummage sale recently. And so really happy to have gotten this sold and sending it out. There aren't a whole lot of hard and fast rules about shipping things on eBay, but there is a pretty well-known rule about shipping hats. So you do want to ship a hat in a box. Uh, you know, you don't want to let it be too flimsy just in case it bends and kind of breaks this bill. And 
We have learned a lot from Flippy McFlipperson. Shout out to him. He's the hat guy that we go to if we ever have any questions. He's kind of the one that got me interested in buying hats and selling hats in the first place. So shout out to him. You should definitely check him out. He also does a weekly What's Sold video and he publishes his on Tuesday. So after our Monday one, just look forward to his on Tuesdays. We love that guy. So there you go. This is going to be a pretty easy ship out. It's probably going to be under a pound and we're going to just ship it out like that. It really just needs this rigidity so that that bill doesn't get folded and bent and broken. So those are some really fun sales. We've been listing like a bunch of different stuff because like we've been saying, we've been just going through our death pile. Mm -hmm. And so it's all sorts of random things. So it's been kind of fun selling different types of items, learning more about different categories and all of that. Mm -hmm. Beyond this, we've been selling through our men's rescue box. So a lot of those sales are just kind of basic. You get a few gems in those boxes, you know, some really great sales, but then the majority of them are, you know, pretty low dollar, like, 15 20 dollars sales yeah. that's great we love that you know we built our business on that model but you know they those just aren't as exciting as you know some of these bigger dollar sales so right. but overall we had a really awesome week we sold 49 items for a gross revenue of one thousand three hundred and thirty two dollars and 25 cents pretty good Mm -hmm. Our cost of goods for those 49 items was $103.29. On eBay, we sold 25 items for $473.37. So that's after fees, shipping, and cost of goods. On Poshmark, we sold 21 items for $284.82. And on Facebook, we sold three items for $57.08. So in total, our net profit from the week was $815.27. So a really good week. Our goal right now is about $500 a week, um, especially because we're still working pretty part-time. Mm -hmm. So 800 is really awesome. Yeah. It was so fun this week to have so many sales. You know, 49 items is really awesome considering we only listed about 35. So that's always great when you sell more than your listing. That's what we're trying to do right now. And so it just is really fun to, you know, get all these sales and be able to back them up. I feel like it's much more fun to have, you know, kind of like a busy business than, you know, one that, you know, you get one sale here, one sale there. But if that's your business model and you like that, probably it might be a little bit more exciting to get, you know, one $200 sale versus, you know, 10, $20 sales. I don't know. Let me know what you think down in the comments, which is like more emotionally gratifying to you. 10, $20 sales or one $200 sale, let us know. Personally, probably the one $200 sale. <laughs> Best work, <laughs> same amount of money. Okay, now it's time for our segment on building wealth. And this is where we give you an update on, you know, the total stock market index experiment that we've been doing for over a year now. This is how it's doing, not great. This week, we put about $50 of our Facebook Marketplace profits into the total stock market index. We're not really going to speculate as to why it is. There are many factors that make it go down in the short term. And then obviously we're doing this for the long term. And so what we're looking at is 40 some odd years that we will be doing this and we're not really worried about it. This is on sale, as they say. So we continue to buy it. And even at the lower price, it's probably better for our dollar cost averaging strategy. But if you want to know more about why we are so adamant about this, there are two books that we've read um, in the past that really give you a great idea of the psychology and the strategy behind this particular index fund. And those are The Simple Path to Wealth by Joe Collins and The Psychology of Money by Morgan Housel. So those two books are very influential for us. I really liked The Psychology of Money. I read it recently, twice, or not read. I, I listened to it on audiobook because I'm a lazy bum. And Let I don't us like... know down in the comments <laughs> if listening to audiobooks counts as reading. <laughs> okay, so I read or listened to these two books and we got these for free by going to our local library and, you know, borrowing them from our library on the, on the Libby app. So there's an extra little hack for you. We, we don't buy too many books and when we do, they're usually used. This is just one of those things where we try to get as much value as we can out of free resources and stuff because it's already paid through our taxes and whatnot. But those two books are very influential for us because it really helped us as a couple and as a team to really be confident even when it's down nearly $1,700 just for this experiment and many thousands of dollars for our personal accounts that we continue to buy. So if you decide to read those two books, 
that will help you really understand at its core why we're doing this particular experiment and showing you that over the long period of time it'll hopefully do well and we won't be complete frauds <laughs> so you know it's it's one of those things where it really is an experiment we're never really trying to convince you that you know any one particular thing is the right way to do it just overall we want to change your mind about how you think about building wealth and investing is just an avenue of that so hopefully this helps you a little bit because you know we've been talking a lot about what is enough what is wealth actually how do people really think about wealth in the very broad terms and you know we were talking last week about you really shouldn't compare yourself to others because personal finance is really personal and to compare yourself to others is a really big detriment to your own way of thinking. Our friend Evan Flippy McFlipperson reminded us of this quote from last week. It essentially is comparison is a thief of joy and you know that rings true. It it, it really kind of just sums it all up from what we said last week is that it really takes away from what you've accomplished and you're really trying to grasp at you know other goals or other ways to conceptualize wealth. It's not always black and white but oftentimes you find that being rich and showing off is not really wealth. So in The Psychology of Money, Morgan Housel draws a distinction between being rich and being wealthy. So being rich is about like the, you know, outer things that show into the world of how much money that you are able to spend. You know, fancy cars, big house, you know, nice vacations, you know, a boat, all those kinds of things. So that's what being rich is, is being able to spend a lot of money, but being wealthy is to have a lot of money. And so to draw that distinction is really helpful because oftentimes our goal is, you know, one or the other, and we don't realize that we are, you know, kind of combining the two when really they're two separate goals. And you don't build wealth by spending money. You build wealth by saving and investing money. And so really it's, they're almost opposed to each other. So mm -hmm. you want to make sure that when you're thinking about your finances, you have those kind of separate and you know which one is your actual goal. For us, our goal is to build wealth. And so that means that we aren't necessarily valuing those things that would make us look rich. You know, oftentimes we maybe look a little poor to, you know, outside people. For us, what we value is building wealth. And so sometimes that means that we are, you know, giving up those things that would make us look rich, you know, like a bigger house, a nicer car, you know, doing all those kinds of things. So that's something that you should be thinking about in your personal finance as well. Yeah, find that balance. It, it's mm -hmm. all about balance, right? You can have a nice car, you can mm -hmm. have a nice house, right. but that should also mean that you're stealthily building your wealth in terms of mm -hmm. savings and investing as well. Mm -hmm. We think of these two things as very extreme things, but mm -hmm. oftentimes it's a sliding scale. Yeah, at one end of the spectrum is, you know, spending all the money that you have and even spending more money than you have. On the other end of the spectrum for building wealth is like, you're like the Scrooge McDuck and you're going swimming in your, you know, pool of money, but you never spend it on anything. Right. So money is very much a psychology thing rather than a numbers thing. So the sliding scale Mm -hmm. will hopefully help you determine do you spend more money than you should which mm -hmm. is the richness part or do you truly have some sort of balance where you mm -hmm. spend a lot on what you value but you're also saving a lot and mm -hmm. doing that so it's not a judgment on our yeah. part to any of you because everyone values things mm -hmm. differently it's not preaching in any way mm -hmm. that you should be you know saving money and you know mm -hmm. eating beans and rice <laughs> yeah. so it's it's really about for us you know, we will spend a lot of money on the things that we enjoy. It's really, really just mm -hmm. trying to figure out what you value. And mm -hmm. at the end of the day, that's different for everyone. So thank you so much for watching this video. Let us know down in the comments how your week went. We'd love to chat with you down there. And if you'd like this video, give it a thumbs up. And if you aren't subscribed, consider subscribing. We would love to have you as part of our YouTube community. And we just love, you know, being able to be a part of this community. We are so thankful and grateful to each one of you. Yeah, keep that passion burning, y'all. We hope that you have had a great week like we have. We've really bounced back in the past few weeks, you know, kind of the rut of summer. Hopefully your weeks are going well. 
Hopefully you're enjoying the beginning of fall and uh, hopefully your Q4 is good as well. We'll see you later. Bye. See you later. Bye. We're rooting for you. Whoops. <laughs>